Happy 724, Roger. Center maintain 2000. Center maintain 2000, Comment 504 to Center maintain 3000. 3000, comment 504. In this video, we're going to be covering some more questions related to uh, federal aviation regulations. Uh, regulations. The first thing I wanted to cover is like when flying below, you are still below the uh, 18,000, right, uh, MSL main sea level. Uh, cruising altitude must be maintained by reference to an altimeter set using what procedure? So the procedure is that uh, when the barometric pressure is 31 uh, point zero zero inches mercury or less each person operating an aircraft must maintain the cruising altitude of that aircraft by reference to an altimeter that is set to the current reported altimeter setting of a station along the route and within 100 nautical miles of the aircraft so when you are below this one uh, you uh, if you have been talking to the ATC they they normally tell you what is the uh, like what is the altimeter re 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 reading and you're gonna be setting your uh, altimeter in order to correct the exact altitude and again if the if there is no station within that uh, 100 miles of range, uh, the current reported altimeter setting of an available station may be used, right? Uh, if the barometric pressure exceeds 31 uh, inches mercury, uh, consult the aeronautical uh, in, uh, information manual. Okay, if an altimeter setting is not available before flight, what procedure must be used? So normally we should definitely uh, uh, set the altimeter using the altimeter setting before the flight. But if you have airborne, uh, use the same procedure as in the case of an aircraft not equipped with a radio. Uh, the elevation of the departure airport or an appropriate altimeter setting available before departure should be used so basically So the reason we say that uh, you use the same procedure as the aircraft is not equipped with a radio is because uh, you are what you what what I'm suggesting to do is like the elevation of the departure air, airport or an appropriate altimeter setting available before departure uh, should be used. So you should actually uh, whatever you had uh, before the departure, uh, you're going to be using that setting. Uh, if like altimeter setting is not available okay third one is when uh, when may a pilot intentionally deviate from the ATC clearance so if ATC tells you something and what are the scenarios where you where you can deviate from uh, the instructions so the one is like an amended clearance has been um, uh, obtained so he asked you to do something and you don't want to do it or you can't do it so you actually get an amended clearance that you're going to be doing something different that is one scenario the second one is an emergency is there and the third one is like in the response of our traffic or collision avoidance um, system so you have a collision avoidance system installed on your aircraft and that is telling you that you're going to be hitting something or something like that uh, then in that that actually kind of falls into the second category which is the emergency one okay as pilot in command uh, what action if any is required of you if you deviate from an ADC instruction and priority is given so if you do not follow ADC like what should you do so first thing is that the each pilot in com command who in an, em in an emergency and we are assuming that you didn't follow the instructions in an, because of an emergency uh, or it could be because of the um, uh, collision avoidance system resolution advisory. 
what you should do is like you must notify ADC of that deviation as soon as possible. And the second thing is that you uh, like if you have been given the priority by the ATC in an emergency, shall submit a sub, uh, a detailed rep report of that emergency within 48 hours if you have been like asked by the ATC manager. Okay, now we're going to be talking about uh, if your radio uh, for the radio failure. If the radio has been failed, it is not working properly, uh, you should know uh, some light signals. So there's a, there's a light gun which can signal few different uh, differently. So and I'm going to be just uh, kind of making a chart here. So the light, if we do not have the radio communication, we are talking to the uh, ADC via the light signals the the meaning of those signals I'm gonna be writing them down so let's just talk about the ground first right so if the light is uh, steady green so if it is on the ground it means you can you are clear to take off take off is clear and if it, if you are in the air it means you can you are clear to land if it is flashing green what it means is like you are clear to taxi while you are on the ground and return for landing maybe you are far away uh, so they want you to be in the pattern right uh, maybe uh, so they, they may ask you to come back to the pattern or return to landing. Okay, steady red. What this would mean is like stop when you are on the ground. And if it is, uh, if you are in air, it could mean continue uh, circling or yield. Let the other one come first. If it is flashing red, and you are on the ground, it means uh, taxi uh, clear of runway. Meaning just move uh, like taxi and clear of runway. Do not come to the runway, uh, uh, taxi away, right? Uh, basically, you, they are asking you to clear off the runway. And if you are on uh, in air and you see the signal, it means you are, it is unsafe, do not land. Uh, two more more to go one is the flashing white this does not mean anything here but for the ground it could mean return to start and the last one is if it is alternating between green and red so red green it just means, in both cases, it means exercise uh, extreme caution. Okay. Then the next one is that if an aircraft radio fails in flight under VFR while operating into a tower controlled airport, what conditions must be met before a landing may be made at that aircraft? So first of all, uh, so here again the radio has been failed and radio has failed plus you want to land to an airport which has a tower. Right now we are not defining what, air, uh, what uh, classification of the airport that is or that has uh, this one just has a tower so basically the weather conditions must be at or above basic VFR weather minimums that is one thing so again it just means that your radio broke you are flying with a VFR flight and you want to land at an airport which has uh, control which is a controlled airport uh, the first thing is uh, the weather should be uh, good enough for the VFR uh, weather 
minimum uh, VFR flight. Visual contact with the tower is maintained and a clearance to land is received. Okay, what procedures uh, should be used when attempting uh, communications with the tower when an aircraft transmitter or receiver or both are in operative? So if like again the transmitter plus the receiver is not working right. So let's talk about first if the receiver is not working right. You can talk to them, ATC can hear you out but like you cannot uh, listen anything from the ATC right. In that case remain outside of that uh, like the uh, uh, outside or above class D uh, surface area and determine the direction and flow of traffic basically because you can send the messages to the uh, ATC so you can advise the tower of the of your aircraft type position altitude intention to land and stuff like that and at when you are about three to five miles away you can advise the tower uh, of position and join traffic pattern uh, watch tower for the light signal in order to land. When the transmitter is not working, right, you cannot or both are not working. Transmitter or both are not working. Uh, things are going to be very similar uh, either way because you cannot actually send the signal, right. So you're going to be uh, remaining outside uh, of that class D uh, airspace. Uh, you would determine the direction and flow of the traffic, monitor uh, the frequency of landing uh, or traffic information while you are circling around, stuff like that. Then you're going to be joining the pattern uh, and watch for the light signal, right? But also uh, you're going to be actually, in order to tell uh, your intention that you want to land, you will uh, what you would do is like uh, again depends on the if it is the daytime you would acknowledge by the rocking wing so you would rock your wings and at the night time you would be actually flashing land uh, landing light uh, or navigation light just to kind of tell them that okay uh, you have got the signal and uh, or you want to land so these are the two things. Uh, during the daytime, you would rock your uh, wings, and at the night time, uh, you would be flashing the landing light. And again, wait for the light landing signal, and then you're gonna be landing after that. Okay, what general rules apply concerning uh, traffic pattern operations uh, at non-tower airports within Class E and G airspace? So, uh, so the general rules are like each person or uh, operating an aircraft to or from an airport without an operating tower. What should he uh, do is like number one is in the case of an aircraft approaching to land, make all turns of that airplane to the left unless the airport displays approved light signals or visual markings indicated that turns should uh, be made to the right, uh, in which case the, uh, the pilot shall make all turns to the right. And the second thing is that in the case of an aircraft departing an airport, comply with all traffic patterns uh, established establish, uh, for that airport. Okay, when operating in class D airspace, what procedure should be used when operating, uh, approaching uh, to land on a runway with a visual approach slope indicator? So, uh, I remember in Binghamton Airport in New York, uh, I have seen this uh, a visual approach uh, slope indicator. So, one way of doing it is like, if you are too high, they're gonna all turn on, right? and you, maybe J will just be all be yellow and if it is too low they will, they are all off meaning none of them is turned on and if you are like on a, a right slope two of them are gonna be on and two of them are gonna be off so that would show you that you are on the right slope so again 
the aircraft approaching to land uh, on a runway served by a visual approach uh, slope indicator shall maintain, a, maintain an altitude at or above the glide spo uh, slope, right? Uh, again, uh, like unless there is like a, uh, there is like uh, you can keep a lower altitude if necessary for a safe landing but like normally they advise you to either uh, you should be uh, maintain at or above uh, the glide slope and the last thing I wanted to cover is uh, what is the fuel requirement for VFR flight at night so at night the fuel requirement for a uh, flight is that uh, you should begin a flight in an aircraft under VFR conditions. Uh, you should not actually do it unless uh, there is enough fuel to fly to the point of intended landing and assuming normal cruising speed at night to fly after that for at least 45 minutes. So let's say if you want to go at uh, from airport A to B right and it takes 30 minutes uh, cruising at the normal uh, flight time so you should have uh, fuel which can actually last for 1 hour 15 minutes why because 30 minutes is the estimated time of uh, flight and we need an excess of 45 minutes uh, of flight time uh, if we are cruising at the uh, uh, the regular uh, the cruising speed if we are actually flying with the cruising speed, uh, we should have an additional 45 minutes of flight time. Those were the things I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching.